चैप्टर एट मैनेजिंग रिस्क चैप्टर कॉन्सेप्ट आइडेंटिफाइंग रिस्क एंड देयर पोटेंशियल इम्पैक्ट असेसिंग द लाइवलीहुड ऑफ ओकोरेंस एंड डिग्री ऑफ इम्पैक्ट ऑफ रिस्क रिस्क रिस्पॉन्स प्लानिंग मॉनिटरिंग रिस्क दिस टॉपिक has uh, following learning outcomes discuss what is involved in managing risks identify and categorize risks assess and prioritize risks prepare a risk response plan develop a risk assessment matrix monitor risks uh, this topic is about the project risk management uh, which is a knowledge area of project management a body of knowledge guide risk management involves identification assessment monitoring and response to project risks to minimize the likelihood of occurrence and or potential impact of adverse events on the accomplishment of the project objective addressing risks proactively will increase the chances of accomplishing the project objective waiting for unfavorable events to occur and then reacting to them can result in panic and costly responses managing risks includes taking action to prevent or minimize the likelihood of occurrence of the impact of such unfavorable events uh, we will start from identify risks uh, a risk is an uncertain event that if it occurs can jeopardize accomplishing the project objective risk identification includes determining which risks may adversely affect the project objective and what the impact of each risk might be if it occurs so sometimes a sponsor identifies major risks in the project charter when the project is authorized a contractor may also identify risks in a proposal to customer it can show the customer that the contractor has experience and a realistic approach to performing the project and wants to avoid surprises it is also a means of managing customer expectation so a common approach to identifying the sources of risks is brainstorming brainstorming a project manager should involve the key project team members in identifying potential sources of risk things that could happen that would negatively impact accomplishing the project objective each member of the project team can bring his or her experience and insight to help develop a comprehensive list of risks so how many risks should be identified a team can go overhead overboard and come up with the hundreds of possible risks for example there is a change where there is a chance that every activity can take longer than estimated or cost more than estimated common sense and reasonableness must prevail when identifying risks the risks should be those that are somewhat likely to occur and or can have a significant negative impact on accomplishing the project objectives uh, similarly another approach is to establish risk uh, categories which are groupings of potential sources of risks by topic and then identify risks that might occur for each category the examples of risk categories along the uh, along with some uh, risks for each are uh, technical risks uh, the examples are for example uh, failure to meet customer performance requirements so this is a technical risk a new application of for technology this is a technical risk uh, may not be able to meet quality standards or costs or codes this is a technical risk the second category of uh, the risks is the uh, schedule risks so for example uh, vendor delay in delivery of critical equipment uh, cost category include material costs escalate more than anticipated uh, human resources category include uh, for example may not have people available when required to staff the project and then there is a category of 
such as like uh, external risks so for example inclement weather is an external risk changes in the uh, government regulations is an external risk and change in consumer preferences is an external risk local protesters file legal action to delay project is an external risk and the final risk category is sponsor or customer related risks so for example sometimes there are delays in the approvals uh, then maybe there may be a, a security of sponsor funding as well so another a source for uh, finding the risks is the uh, identifying possible risks by historical information from past projects uh, so if past project if uh, if the uh, post project evaluations are done on completed projects they should be a good source for identifying pro possible risks as well as for getting information on how to address such risks if they occur again uh, so so in this case we can identify some uh, specific risks so for example uh, incorporating advanced technology in a new product and uh, performance requirements for taking measurement 10 times faster than can be done currently uh, technological advances that could make the originally selected technology obsolete before the project is completed and uh, also a first time use of new robotic equipment for a rare and complex surgical procedure so all these are risks and similarly if you see there are <coughs> so many other uh, risk examples uh, which have been given on uh, page 292 of your textbook so you can look at those examples once you identify risks the potential impacts for the identified risks must be estimated uh, such impacts uh, should include uh, scheduled delays substantial additional expenditures the project and deliverable not meeting acceptance criteria the lack of uh, customer acceptance of new product the cus customers uh, enforcement of uh, penalty terms in a contract or the sponsors termination of the contract so all these are the impacts of the risks uh, also it should be uh, noted that at the beginning of the project it may not be possible to identify all risks uh, this is especially true for longer term projects such as multi-year projects or projects that have several phases it may be easier to identify risks associated with the uh, near term efforts but as the project progresses the project team can progressively elaborate the identification of new risks as well as the estimated impacts of previously identified risks as more information is known or become clear so the brief uh, brief uh, introduction about to uh, identify risks uh, next step in the risk management is the uh, risk uh, assessment that means assess the risks so risk assessment involves uh, determining the likelihood uh, that a risk event will occur and the degree of impact the event will have on the project objective so each of these factors can be assigned a rating of high medium or low for example or some other rating scale 1 to 5 1 to 10 percentages etc the project manager in consultation with appropriate team members or other experts who are knowledgeable about the potential risk should determine ratings for each risk Historical data from prior similar projects can also be helpful. For example, if severe weather is a risk, historically, historical daily weather data or consultation with the weather forecasting service may be useful. So uh, based, 
Based on the likelihood of occurrence and degree of impact, the risks can then be prioritized. For example, those with a high likelihood of occurrence and a high degree of impact should be assigned a higher priority for more serious consideration than risks that have a low likelihood of occurrence and a low degree of impact. So uh, another uh, factor to consider in prioritizing risks is whether a risk is related to activities that are on critical paths. If so, perhaps such risks should be given higher priority because if the risk occurs, it would have a greater impact on the schedule than it, uh, if it was associated with activities on a path that has a large positive value of total slack. Briefly, once the risks have been assessed, then risk responses should be planned. Okay. Risk responses should be planned. Uh, but before we do the uh, plan uh, risk responses, uh, the output of the risk assessment uh, can be created in the form of the risk assessment a matrix. The risk assessment matrix is a tool for assessing and managing risks. Uh, it is also referred to as a risk register. Uh, which includes uh, potential risks, uh, their potential impact, likelihood of occurrence and response plan. So for example, uh, this figure uh, shows the more significant risks and their associated information for, an, uh, for a project for an outdoor concert. So for example, for an outdoor concert, some of the risks have been identified. So two of the risks have been listed in this figure over here. Uh, rain on the day of event so its impact can be low attendance and incur the financial loss uh, likelihood of occurrence have been rated as medium but the impact will be high so for this if this risk has been identified and if it has been assessed its action or response can be also prepared okay so the response for that is is that weather forecast two days before the event has to be taken so if we if the red weather forecast is uh, not that good then we can plan the response and then some of the responsibility to the person taking that risk uh, monitoring that risk should be assigned so possible responses uh, maybe reserve the indoor space if two days before a forecast is taken and then the if it is a chance of rain then an indoor space can be reserved and uh, recruit extra volunteers to work around the clock to set up the indoors okay and develop detailed plans so these are the some of the plans uh, responses which can be planned uh, another risk which is assigned is the uh, which is identified is the risk road construction so if there is any road construction on the way of the concert then it may reduce the attendance it may reduce the revenue as well so its likelihood of occurrence have been identified as high and impact is also high so what can be the action on trigger so highway department publishes construction schedule so should be consulted with the highways department and then some of the responses should be planned so identify the alternative alternate routes have the signs made post signs along all routes and announce in news media etc so these uh, if we know some of the if you identify the risks beforehand then there is a chance that we can response we can provide a response to those risks so that is called as the response plan so we will look at the types of response plan in the next uh, slides in the next slide plan risk responses 
So a risk response plan, and actually we have uh, discussed some of the features of this risk response plan in this. So a risk response plan is a defined set of actions to prevent or reduce the likelihood of occurrence or the impact of a risk or to implement if the risk event occurs. So risk response planning involves developing an action plan to reduce the likelihood of occurrence or potential impact of each risk, establishing a trigger point for when to implement the actions to address each risk and assigning responsibility to specific individuals for implementing each response plan. A risk response plan can be to avoid the risk, to mitigate the risk or accept the risk. Avoidance means to eliminate the risk by choosing a different course of action. Examples of avoiding risk would be to decide to use conventional technology rather than advanced state-of-the-art technology in a new product or to decide to hold a weekend festival indoors to avoid the possibility of a rain out. And mitigating the risk involves taking actions to reduce the likelihood that the risk event will occur or to reduce the potential impact. For example, Reducing the risk of multiple redesigns of a customer's website might require reviewing other sample designs with the client earlier in the project. And then uh, accepting the risk means dealing with it if and when it occurs, rather than taking actions to avoid or reduce the impact. So, a risk response plan should include a trigger point or warning flag for when to implement the action plan for each risk. A trigger point for which uh, for when to purchase a rare material may be if the current price increases more than 5% above the amount budgeted for purchasing the material. The trigger point for deciding to incorporate advanced technology in a new product may be the completion of an engineering feasibility study. Another example would be to authorize over time if the project falls behind schedule by more than 5% of the remaining project duration. The plan risk responses uh, have been made. The risks should be uh, monitored. So monitoring risk includes implementing risk response plans uh, tracking identified risks, identifying and analyzing new risks, and evaluating the risk response process. So risk response plans should be implemented as appropriate when their trigger point is reached. Implementing risk response plans often requires spending additional funds for additional resources, working over time, paying for expedited shipments, purchasing additional materials, and so forth. So project prices and budgets should include a contingency reserve to pay for additional costs associated with implementing response plans. So uh, risk monitoring involves that regularly reviewing the risk assessment matrix throughout the project. During the project, it is important to regularly monitor and evaluate all risks to determine if there are any changes to the likelihood of occurrence of the or the potential impact of any of the risks. So these factors can determine if a particular risk has increased in priority or attention or if the risk has diminished in importance. So furthermore, new risks may be identified that were not considered as risks earlier in the project but now need to be added to the risk assessment matrix. So for example, early tests of the prototype of a new product indicate the product may now uh, not meet the original performance specifications. Another situation may be that because of the previous delays in the design phase, the construction phase of a facility expansion is now scheduled to take place in the middle of the hurricane season. So during a project, 
the customer may initiate changes to the project work scope schedule or budget that could also affect the assessment of previously defined risks or results in the identification of new risks look at the uh, managing risks for information systems development uh, in this uh, uh, system uh, in this project risk can be categorized into seven types uh, so risks are inherent in all aspects of an information system development project so the risk can be categorized into seven types of risks technological risks human risks uh, usability risks project team risk project risk organizational risk and strategic and political risk so these categories help to explain the risks associated with developing systems that accept data points, process those inputs and uh, produce information to be used by the users. Example here is this uh, information systems example risk assessment uh, matrix. These forms of risk assessment matrices, uh, matrices can be uh, prepared so in this form uh, we have uh, used a table in the form of uh, first uh, the risk has been identified and then its impact has been described after its impact then the likelihood of the occurrence and the degree of the impact have been rated by the project uh, participants uh, the next are the actions on trigger and uh, uh, responsibility and the response plan so for example uh, lack of uh, cooperation and commitment from users so this is the risk and what will be its impact uh, uh, incorrect sales records in reporting systems so its likelihood is medium its degree of impact will be high so how we can uh, say that this risk is uh, going to occur soon so this will be the trigger so it can be triggered by when sale sales staff have difficulty using system during training okay and uh, we have assigned its responsibility and its response plan is that have additional training materials to describe how to use let's see another one a high number of ad hoc queries so we are getting high number of ad hoc queries and its impact is that system design is not completed on time okay so it's because of that so its likelihood is low but its impact is high and uh, action on trigger is that more queries to be answered than time remaining to complete so have and its response plan is have assigned staff work longer on tasks staff have at least seven days to seven days of slack project team can prepare this kind of risk assessment metrics the project team can discuss that these risks would change as the project progress okay so uh, so the risk assessment metrics may change depending on the condition or how the project goes and based on this uh, lessons from can be learned from other projects again to make sure that the project team uh, discuss the risks from the other projects at the next team project update meeting this topic uh, we can learn these uh, critical uh, success uh, factors uh, identify risks and their potential impacts before the project starts so it is important they involve the project team or experts in assessing risks so in this way then we can identify better risks and then of course a better assessment of the risk can be made assign high priority 
to managing risks that have a high likelihood of occurrence and a high potential impact on the project outcome. So this is uh, obvious. Uh, and then uh, develop the response plans for addressing high priority risks. So we can summarize uh, this topic as follows. Uh, risk is an uncertain event then uh, that if it occurs uh, can jeopardize accomplishing the project objective. Uh, risk management includes identification, assessment, monitoring and response to project risks in order to minimize the likelihood of occurrence and or the potential impact of adverse events on the accomplishment of the project objective. Risk identification includes determining which risks may adversely affect the project objective and estimating what the potential impact of each risk might be if it occurs. Assessing each risk involves determining the likelihood that the risk event will occur and the degree of impact the event will have on the project objective and then prioritizing the risks. A risk response plan is defined a set of actions to prevent or reduce the likelihood of occurrence or the impact of a risk or to implement if the risk event occurs. And regularly review and evaluate all risks to determine if there are any changes to the likelihood of occurrence to or, or the potential impact of any of the risks or if any new risks have been identified. 